All right, let us start with a single loop. You can also cast on three, but I'm going to show you how I do it with a single loop. You're going to put that on your needle. Let it have a bit of space. So it's pretty loose, pretty loose, loose loop. And then we're going to grab the long end, not the one, not the tail that we're going to fasten. And you go in the stitch, yarn over and out. Don't let go of this. And then you do a yarn over and then you go in this one again and yarn over a third time. And now you release it and suddenly you've gone from one stitch to three. So that is the first round. And every time we turn around to go back, we're going to purl. And every time we purl, we're not going to change the stitch count. So to get a slightly neater edge, this was a trick someone told me, I don't remember when, the first stitch, we just slip. We don't do anything to it. And then yarn in front of the needle. This is the Norwegian purl, because that is what I know. So that's what I'm going to show you. Um, so yarn over the needle and you go with your needle into the top of the stitch, twist the yarn around your needle so that it's three of them. And now when you go under the stitch again and out, you will have a purl and you can release this stitch. So that is yarn in front, down into the stitch, around and out. Pretty easy, right? And then we, of course, make sure we don't add any extra stitches on the end. Now we are back to the knit side. So again, we want to expand. We can only expand two so far. Four is going to be soon, but we slip the first one. You one yarn over to give us an extra stitch. Knit. Yarn over. Knit. And then we're back to the purl side again. Make sure you don't make any extra stitches and slip, purl. No changes on the purl side. I kept it nice and easy. No, none of the over uh, advanced lace patterns here. It's just a very basic. Um, so it's a good, good start, I think. Now we have five stitches. We're going to start doing what we were supposed to, which is yarn over, knit, yarn over, knit, yarn over, knit, and yarn over. That's four increases in one round. And again, nothing happens on the purl round. It's just a return to the knit round. So I know a lot of you don't like purl stitches, but at least you don't have to think about patterns. You just have to maintain the same stitch count that you started with. Now that we have, what is this, nine? Yeah, it's going to be nine. I'm going to start splitting this up into how I want it uh, in this final shawl. So I don't want the hole on each end to be all the way at the edge. I think that looks a bit like fragile. So I want to have three stitches before I do the, the yarn over the increase on the sides. So one, two, three, and that's going to be where our stitch marker is. Well, not stitch marker, but where the yarn increase is. Knit one and this one. And this here, you can already see it's starting. This is where our center line is. Let's go ahead and mark that. Keep going. All right, 
now that we have eight stitches on either side of this increased line and the center increased line it's kind of pretty easy to start any which pattern you want without too much finagling with the pattern in the beginning if you're not used to that so i'm going to do a yarn over which is a circle in the patterns but i mean these edges are not in the pattern of course that's just a bit static so we have these five stitches that is our yarn over and an extra stitch just to protect it and i'm going to place a stitch marker because we're going to be increasing on the left side here so if i always think that my pattern starts right after this we're going to be in trouble but if we look at this i was going to do the zigzag but let's do the dragon scales so you see it's a circle first let's see if we can zoom there we go um First, there's a circle, which is your yarn over. I've already done several of those. So again, it's just a yarn over to increase, which means somewhere there needs to be a decrease. But yeah, we just slip the yarn over. That's those circles. And then there is one knit, one regular knit. And diagonal line going towards the right that is knit two together which is you have two stitches here and you go in under the second one you grab both of them and you knit it as usual and then there is another regular knit I'm gonna put these up on the screen for you to see as well because that's probably easier so you can see what I'm doing with my hands and then a regular knit and then there is a line diagonally towards the left that means slip one over to the other side knit one and take this slipped stitch over the first one that you just knitted give me my own belt thank you and then there is another knit and a yarn over and a knit and we are back at the center and we knit that so how i think about luckily for us this pattern is symmetrical so it's not so bad but how i think about this is there is a knit here so when we knitted this pattern here is the increase in between and there is a regular knit and there is an increase that means we are going to do the same so we are going to slip this one knit one so they become mirror images of each other and then start here which means that this one is staggered by one compared to the other one but yeah i just sort of counted what i did and then i do a mirror of that and then we knit and then we knit two together and knit slip one knit one take the slipped stitch over this gives you a stitch that leans towards the left instead of the right with knit two together and then we knit one and we do a yarn over and we knit and the yarn over to increase the shawl and knit three at the end and i haven't written this out in the patterns but you'll see here on the side oops you'll see here on the side that the um rounds are all in odd numbers so one three five seven nine eleven etc that is because still even though we're doing a pattern it's still just purl to get back so you don't have to think about it you don't have to read the pattern for that you just slip the first one and purl your way back And the yarn overs are what's going to be the most visible. They are going to be the holes in your lace. So if a pattern isn't uh, entirely symmetrical in terms of how the holes are created, the holes are what you want to go after, if that makes sense. 
And in the case with this pattern, you have three of the same. Three, yarn over. And now you see instead of five stitches in front of the stitch marker, we have six. So it's quite easy to lose count if you don't pay attention. If you're not, uh, if you're not, feel, if you don't feel confident enough to count half the pattern, like in this case, we could do half the pattern. We would have your one yarn over and one decrease. That'll add up to zero. Um, but if we started sort of with two decreases and one yarn over, that would be a net decrease. So that wouldn't work with the pattern. So when you, if you do have a pattern at any point, just make sure that, you know, you count and make sure that you do the half that will give you a net zero so that you have the four increases you're supposed to for every round that you knit. But yeah, so the stitch marker marks where we start the pattern again. So yarn over, knit, and then knit two together. Sometimes I like to loosen the first. It can be a bit difficult to grab both of them. And then knit and grab one, knit, take the slipped stitch over and knit one and yarn over and we finish. And here also we have one and two before we're at the center line because we increased by one. And I like to drag this one in front again to have most in front. Yarn over, knit, yarn over. So I said I had two. Here is my yarn over the hole here for the pattern. So I knit two to make it symmetrical before I do my yarn over. Knit. And knit. And one, two, three. Yarn over. Center line. Yarn over, one, two, three, so that they start in the same place. If you wanted to, you could place a stitch marker here, but I like to kind of double check myself and make sure I'm still centered and haven't forgotten something or made a mess of the thing. That's just a personal preference. You can do whatever you are most comfortable with. And then now we are starting to change things a bit. We have knit, two together, yarn over, knit, yarn over, and slip one over. And then it is one, two, three. And it would have been I knit two together here if we were continuing the pattern, but that would give us lead us straight into the territory of the center line. So we're not gonna do that. We're gonna make sure our center line always gets those two yarn overs that increases the stitch count every round. And I lost where I was. Fantastic. Let's see. Here and over here. One, two, three. One, two, three. No, one, two, three. So five. And here we have one, two, three, three, four, five. Should bring us to the, let's see so if you see here sometimes you can look at the pattern what's going on so here is our yarn leaning to the left here is our yarn knit two together on the right so there are five stitches this is the center and i want to do knit two together yarn over knit yarn over slip knit slip over Again, one, two, three, and we continue. 
without the next repeat to get the edge correct. Always prioritize getting the center line and the edges, the increases they are supposed to, which is four extra stitches per every knit round. Not any purl round, they are just purl stitches, nothing happens. But every knit round, you increase by four stitches in total. So when it comes to the lace patterns, they just should always net into zero with just as many yarn overs, so increases, as you have decreases. Okay, and you can see the holes of the pattern starting to appear outside of the edges. It's a little denser than the shawl I made for my friend, but that is because this is slightly thicker, so you can actually see what is going on a little, a little easier. We do the edge as usual, and now we have four stitches until the mask, uh, until the stitch marker, and we are, see, at line nine, in, or round nine in the pattern. And if we wanted to, we could start with them, like we start here when we start at the stitch marker, right? So if we want to pretend that we are have half a round before the stitch marker, we need to start counting from this. So one, two, three, four. So that's gonna be one knit, one yarn over, one slipped over, and a knit. Takes us to the edge like that, and then we have our stitch marker, and then we start on the right hand side and count our way towards the left. And in knitting patterns, you do read from right to left, opposite of how you would uh, read in the West, because you also, of course, you knit going from right to left. So it just makes a little bit more sense when you're knitting, because you grab the stitches one by one, and that's just how that, that's just how that goes. And you can do the same, of course, going a little bit in to the next round. Just again, make sure that you don't lose any stitches where you need increases for every round. We can grab this over as well. And the last stitch that you need in order to make these shawls, you have almost everything you need, is also the one that's going to be a little bit tricky. It's a three together. It's marked by this little upside down fork. And what is tricky about it is that if it is along the left side, like here, then it sort of goes slightly into the next one, uh, the next pattern repeat, I guess you could call it. Um, and it goes like this. So when there are two on the, le on the right side of the stitch marker, or, you know, the beginning, of a pattern repeat in this case. Uh, the symbol is on the left hand side because the majority is on the left hand side. So there's just one on the right that we need to take into account. And this is only when the symbol is on the left hand edge. You don't have to think about this kind of thing when it's in the middle because then you just do a pattern repeat as usual with the symbol. You slip one and we slip the second two just because in this case the stitch marker is in the way. Take that off and we put this one back. So we have one slipped here, and then we knit two together. And then we take this slipped stitch over, and that is knitting three together. And I forgot to do yarn over in front, which is what the pattern tells me to do. I'll show you a little cheat. So if you forget, because you were going to block this later, you can see here, this is the yarn between this stitch and this stitch. So if I sneak my needle in here, I have a yarn over. It's slightly tighter than I wanted, but the blocking is going to take care of that. So then I can put this one back and have my yarn over right there without having to redo the stitch if I forget. And since this one 
takes three stitches to one, it needs two yarn overs to turn it into a net zero. So there's a yarn over on the other side as well. And then that is all that happens in this one. And then we just wait. I need to put my stitch marker back so that I know where the start of the round is. And then we do a yarn over and then we knit five stitches because that is all that happens in this specific pattern repeat. So we can do that once more without a stitch marker because there is room here before we get to the center line. So that is yarn over, slip, knit two together and take that slipped stitch over the two stitches that you just knit, knitted together, giving you a three in one so that you get a nice little arrow point. And then we do a yarn over here again. And let's see how many stitches until we get to the edge. Two, three, four. And that should all math out. Yarn over, center line, yarn over, and then it should be one, two, three, Four, so it's symmetrical, yarn over, slip, knit two together, slip it over, and yarn over again. And one, two, three, four, five in this case. And yarn over, slip, knit two together, and take that slip stitch over. And yarn over. One, two, three, four to the edge, yarn over for the stitch count and three edge stitches. And that's kind of how we continue. You can sort of see how, you know, it's turning into this triangle shape. Like this is going to be straight and this will be the two triangles or like lines that lead towards the point of the shawl. You can sort of see it happening as as we're going. And sometimes, especially between the big patterns, you know, the 16 stitch increase rather than just the 8 stitch increase, but also between the 8 stitch increase pattern repeats if you want to, you can do lines of just plain stitches with purl back and plain stitches just to get like a line in between each pattern. If you want that, that can be a nice look. That can absolutely work. Just remember to do those four increases, two at the center line and one on each edge, even though you are just doing a round of just plain knit. Uh, it's the same as when we started in the beginning, you know, before we started with the pattern because we didn't have enough stitches. You can do that just for fun as well. I mean, you could do if you want to, you can do the whole shawl with just plain one way and purl the other, so long as you do those four increases. That'll be a very nice, very warm um, shawl without the holes of the lace knit. It'll be very even and very nice. It'll certainly work uh, if you want to do that. But if you want to try some of the patterns, I encourage you, if you're not familiar with them, do some swatches. Get used to how they look to get used to what you need to do for them and you'll have the confidence to try some of these in no time. I think I'm going to just do half the dragon scale because you kind of have everything you need now except for the cast off and the blocking uh, which is just you know soak it in some lukewarm water with some wool friendly soap. I use just hand soap. Uh, you can also use shampoo. It's uh, the only thing is that you don't use uh, enzyme enzyme based laundry detergents because they are a bit strong for wool. So just use something that is, you know, nice and friendly. And then you let it soak for 10, 15 minutes up to an hour. You squeeze the water out and you sort of lay it out, stretch it into the shape that you want it to be at the end. This can help you get rid of some of the rolling that sometimes happens along the edge when you don't do that. Um, it's not necessary to block it. It helps. It makes it nice and soft. It 
Uh, if, if you think wool itches, I recommend you try to block some of the things you think itch and let it soak in water for a while, because when we are stretching stitches every which way, you end up with wool fibers sticking out. Um, and the blocking can really help those fibers relax again. So blocking can actually really help you if you find that freshly knitted wool items itch. Um, blocking can really be beneficial there. Uh, you can also just wear it until it stops itching, but that can be a bit uncomfortable. So you, you could try that, uh, but it's also just to get the final shape. Uh, but for casting off, so again, <laughs> Norwegian cast off, because that is what I know. But the important thing here is if you don't feel confident enough to do this loosely, you could grab some bigger knitting needles. I know many people do that and that works fine. But what I do is sort of, I'll go into cast off mode, which means I won't tighten anything. So I just grab my stitch. I slip the first one as usual and I knit it loosely, much looser than I usually would. And without sort of pulling on the stitch, I just slip it carefully over and I just sort of lay the stitch there and I take this one because if you have a pull too hard, you're going to pull on this front stitch as well. And that's going to create a cascading effect and you're going to end up with, you know, if an edge that is all scrunched together as if you pleated or gathered it. And that is not really what you want. You want a light, nice, loose shawl that hangs freely. And that can be the cause of that if you don't. So even if you're cautious, you could even look, have them a little bit more loose than you otherwise would. But if you overdo it, you end up with, you know, a bit of a, <laughs> a ruffle because it gets a bit big. But that is the reason why I sort of, when I cast off my stitches, I don't tighten. I, you feel the yarn and you make sure that it doesn't move. It sort of stays nice and loose. And the edge that you end up with when you do it in this way, it looks a bit akin to, you know, um, crocheted edge or other. It's it's not the most flexible cast off, but it's flexible enough to hang loosely. And that is what we need in this instance. So you just knit one and slip the previous one over so that you always have one or two stitches on your needles. And of course we remove our stitch marker. Thank you, friend. And what I forgot to show you, I guess, when, when you have more than eight stitches to the right of the stitch marker, I will move my stitch marker, which it's not always that easy to do that. So I'll just put a new stitch marker on, knit the eight stitches to the stitch marker and take the stitch marker off. Hopefully that makes sense. And then I've moved it, you know, a little bit closer to the edge again and I just keep staggering it like that towards the edge whenever there are eight stitches that is sort of surplus from increasing the stitch count with the edge stitches and that is how I keep track of where my rounds are starting you can if you want to have a stitch marker for every pattern repeat but I find that it gets a little bit crowded for me uh, on a project as big as this, but that is entirely up to you. If you need that help to keep counting, do it. Just use like a lot of safety pin pins or something like that. Um, we could pull out this now. We don't have to. It's completely loose. You know, it's not stuck in anything. So we could just pull that out. We are done with you. And knit like so. And that was the last one. Pull this one out and make sure you don't lose all your hard work up until now. Pass this one through and we've locked it. Now we just need to weave in the ends. But yeah, that's sort of the basics that you need in order to make a shawl like this, but bigger. I really hope you try it out and good luck.